Hello everyone, welcome back. In the last video, we went over how to calculate the value of a state using the Bellman equation in a deterministic setting. If you haven't seen that, I encourage you to check it out before continuing with this video. I'll wait here till you have had a chance to catch up. Now that we are all caught up, let's talk about what happens when actions are not deterministic. Here we have the Bellman equation for calculating the value of a state. But this time, we assume our actions are probabilistic. This changes things because the value of a state is now not just the immediate reward plus the discounted value of a single next state. Instead, we consider the sum of the values of all possible states we might end up in, weighted by the probabilities of reaching each of them from our current state and action. If we assumed a probability of 1 for moving to a specific next state, like we did in the deterministic case, this equation will simplify back to the deterministic Bellman equation. To illustrate this, let's revisit the example from our last video. In our 3 cross 3 grid world, we have Jerry starting at 0, 0 and Tom at 0, 2 with a reward of minus 1 and Cheese at 2, 2 with a reward of plus 1. But here's the catch. Now whenever Jerry takes an action, he only has a 50% chance of moving in the intended direction. The other 50% of the time, he will move to a random direction. For example, if Jerry tries to move right from 0, 0, there's a 50% chance he'll actually move to 0, 0, 1. There's also a 50% chance that he'll move to any other adjacent cell, including the right one. As before, we'll use a reward matrix and a value matrix. The value matrix is in slice with zeros everywhere except at the terminal states 0, 2 and 2, 2 where the values are minus 1 for Tom and plus 1 for the cheese respectively. So if Jerry starts at 2, 1, the best action is still to move right. However, unlike last time, Jerry's movement outcomes are probabilistic, which means there's only a 50% chance to move right and end up in state 2, 2. There's a 12.5% chance that he will move left, a 12.5% chance that he'll move up, a 12.5% chance that he will move right, a 12.5% chance that he will move down, which is that he will stay in the state 2, 1. So we can calculate the value of state 2, 1 now using the Bellman equation, which is the immediate reward plus the discount factor gamma multiplies by the weighted probability values and the value of the state that those actions will take him into. If we substitute the values, the immediate reward we know is 0, the gamma is 0 0.9 and there's a 50% chance of moving right and a 1200% chance of moving up, a 12.5% chance of moving right again, a 12.5% chance of moving down, which is to remain in the same state, and a 12.5% chance to move uh, left. And if we calculate, we get the value of the state as 0.5625. However, this isn't the final value for state 2, 1 as we have only computed it based on one iteration. If we repeat this calculation, substituting the newly calculated value of state 2, 1 as 0.5625, we find that the value of state 2, 1 now approaches 0.6528. Now, by iterating multiple times over all the states, we can eventually converge to the value for each state under probabilistic actions. But you can see this is different than using deterministic actions. You can find the link in the description where we provide the fully converged values for each state and the code snippet to do so. In the next video, we'll build on this concept to introduce Q-learning and train our first RL agent on the frozen lake gym environment. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe and see you in the next video. Bye bye.